Hello and welcome back to the Beautiful Things channel. I'm Claire from Beautiful Things and I teach sewing and craft classes from my studio in Brentwood in Essex. So I'm here today to review another sewing pattern for you and it's another craft sewing pattern today rather than a garment. This is the Oslo Craft Bag and it is by Sarah Lawson and it's from the Sew Sweetness range. So I shall show you this in a little bit more detail. Here we go. So it's this lovely craft tote with pockets along the front. It's got pockets on the end and pockets on the inside. It's got pockets everywhere actually. So I shall tell you first of all how I came about reviewing this pattern and why. So I have a lovely student called Kim who has done my beginner's sewing course and has been on a couple of other courses with me throughout the last 18 months. And she sent me a link to this pattern and said, Claire, I'd really like to make it, but I'm a little bit nervous about trying it on my own. Can we do it as a class? So believe it or not, this pattern is a completely free download. It's free to use and free to download um, and you do not have to purchase it, which I am amazed by because it is a very, very detailed and very good pattern um, for the fact that it's a freebie. So she sent me the pattern, I had a good look through. It needed an awful lot of materials and an awful lot of time. And so I said to her, what I would rather do, I'd quite fancy making one for myself, but instead of making it in advance and then teaching her how to, I said I would hold her hand. Now I quite often do this um, with pupils if they come to me with a pattern that I'd quite like to try for myself. So basically we have a lovely session where we make it together. And that's exactly what we did. It's actually taken us 11 hours in total to make this bag. We started last Wednesday and we carried on again today and it's Wednesday again now. So we've had two sessions to make the bag um, and I thought I'd tell you all about it and show you my finished make. So this is my craft tote. Should move back so you can see it. It's really, really lovely. So you can see it's got pockets on the front here and then it's got these lovely pockets on the end. I'm not sure how well these will show up, but you can see they're poppered. Open that up. And they've got a really lovely roomy gusset off the side there. You can see there's a little pleat here which gives it some shaping. So there's lots of lovely additional features. On the back you've got one big long pocket and then the handles go on with um, rectangular, I call them D-rings, but they're not, they're rectangular ones. And then inside, oh, I've got some stray bobbins, that's what's rattling around in there. Oh, we've gone out of focus. There we go. Inside, you've got a divider here, and then there's a pocket in the end, and another pocket in this end here as well. And it's all bound around the top edge. So it's a really, really lovely project. As I say, the pattern is completely free of charge, but it does need quite a lot of materials. Now, it's a US pattern as well, so we did have to do a bit of research when it came to looking for the materials. So I thought I'd run you through where we managed to find what we needed. So obviously you need a yard of exterior fabric and a yard of lining fabric and half a yard of solid fabric for your straps and your binding but then you need half a yard of foam interfacing now the stuff they tell us to use is by Annie's and it's called soft and stable or Pellon flex foam or Bosal in R foam form or automotive headliner so that to me was just like gobbledygook there's four options there obviously four different makes they're all american um so i decided to jump on my friend amazon and i googled it well amazoned it um, and i found some of the bosal in our form so i ordered that it was quite expensive i think it was about 12 pounds um and i only got one long strip of it so I wasn't amazingly successful with that. Kim, however, went to our local craft shop in Barleylands in Billericay and she managed to find some foam interfacing there. Now, what we didn't realise is both of us managed to buy fusible interfacing, um, foam interfacing, and it's fusible on both sides. It's double-sided. Now, the stuff that you're supposed to use to make this isn't fusible, 
you're just supposed to baste your fabric pieces onto the foam. But we found it much, much easier to use the fusible, but obviously because it was double-sided, we did have to make sure that we laid it down on an old towel so that when we ironed on the fabric, we could pull off the towel off the back and we didn't get any um, fusible onto our iron or our ironing board. So that seemed to work okay. The other thing you need, um, they give you all sorts of names again, um, but basically you want some medium weight fusible interfacing, so regular interfacing. The metal rectangles, which I purchased again from Amazon, and a set of pearl snaps. So the idea is that you're supposed to put um, them just here and just here. I did buy the pearl snaps, but I haven't got a snap um, closure, and I found it so hard to push them through the level of the fabric, the thickness of the fabric, that actually I didn't bother putting them on in the end, I just stitched it. So you don't have to put those on, they're optional. But you will need a cam snap fastener um, to do the little snaps on the end here. And I got my cam snap fastener um, in the UK from the Little Fabric Bazaar, so I shall put their link down below. So the instructions are fantastic. They are step-by-step -step instructions. So there's photographs every step of the way. Really, really, really clear descriptions. All of your seam allowances are included for every single part of the bag that you make. Um, and yes, it is fiddly. Yes, it takes time, but it is not impossible to make. It's really quite enjoyable watching it all come together and seeing how those seam allowances work with each other to allow the bag to construct itself. Um, it's extremely sturdy, the foam um, interfacing makes for a really nice sturdy project. Um, the only thing I will say is that the lining is a little bit on the big side for the bag itself. Now whenever I've made a bag before and I've interfaced it with any kind of wadding or foam, I've always made the lining ever so slightly smaller than the outer um, to allow it to fit in. However, this is exactly the same size as the outers and I think what happens is when the, the outside of the bag is turned in the right way and you've got all of your raw edges and all of your seams on the inside, they take up space which the lining should be fitting into. So therefore making the lining a little bit smaller might help you. But saying that, once you've got stuff in it, it really doesn't matter that it doesn't sit perfectly down on the inside. I'm really, really happy with this as a make. Um, and I have a newfound respect for anybody that makes these guys to sell on sites like Etsy. I was trying to do the maths the other day. I've seen them on there for about 55, 65 pounds, um, which is a lot of money, but it is well, well worth it when you consider there is easily 15 to 20 pounds worth of materials in this before you even start making it. And if you were to charge for your time, as I say, it took me 11 hours to make this in total. But I think if I made it again and I was making them to sell, I could probably get that down to eight or nine. But even if we said eight hours, at five pounds an hour, that's still 40 pounds before you've even put any profit on it. 20 pounds of material, that's 60 pounds. That's not even paying myself minimum wage. If I did pay myself minimum wage, we'd be looking at sort of 90 odd pounds before we'd even added any extra on to make a profit. I have an absolute respect for anybody who makes anything like this for Etsy. It is just tantamount to me that there is really hardly any money to be made in the handmade market and it is such a shame. There are so many people out there who are doing it purely for the love. Um, but yeah, not really a lot else to say. Really fantastic pattern, works really well, sews up really nicely. The fabric, in case you're interested, this gorgeous bird print um, is from a site called So Scrumptious. Um, and I have got a discount code if you want to use it for So Scrumptious. It will give you 10% off your first order. So don't just order one fat quarter. Save it up and use it when you want a couple of metres of something. If you use the code CLAIRE, C-L-A-I-R-E, in the coupon box when you check out, you will get 10% off your first order. Um, the lining fabric is also from So Scrumptious and the orange fabric was just some scrap that I had in my stash. So yeah, this is the So Sweetness 
bag is the Oslo Craft Bag by So Sweetness, and I'll put the link down below. Go order yourself a copy, it's completely free. There are loads of other sites, um, there are loads of other patterns on her page as well that are also free. Um, so if you do try anything else from the So Sweetness range, do tag me on Instagram or social media and let me have a little look so I can see what you've been making and use the hashtag BTHQ. I will see you again soon. Thanks for watching. Bye.